This house is not for you. It's the time for the next generation. That is why I sold this house to my eldest son and his wife. The eldest son's wife says, That's right. Give us a house and get the hell out. My husband is scoffing at me as old woman. My daughter-in-law is following him and saying, Get out from the house. And my older son looked like an evil to me too. Hey, were you listening to me? This house is no longer yours. Pack your bag quickly. If not, my father will be even more mad. Whatever he says is very mean to me. Does he desperately want this house? I'll let make their dream come true. Okay, I'm leaving as you wish. The three of them suddenly became silent when I expressed my dismay. And I get back inside the house to get my belongings. You can have the house, but even if you do, you never know how much trouble ahead of you. And you never expect that you will be the one who will regret. Hi. My name is Sophia. I am now a kimono dressing instructor. Because a friend introduced me a job to work to in the kimono shop when I was 20 years old. I met my husband, Carter, through one of the mutual friends, and he is a pretty famous kimono instructor even now later. We got married at 24 and had a son the following year and had our second child three years after that. After graduating from university, the second son got a job at a major corporation, and he got married five years later. On the other hand, the oldest son got married at the age of 40, but his personality stays the same, very self depravity His wife mainly earned money to support the family, while the oldest son stays at home and pretends to be a housewife. Our sons almost become independent, so we would enjoy our own lives. I thought that, but things aren't going so well. My family has quite many problems. Hey, who told you to prepare this? How many times have I told you to drink coffee in the morning? But... I believe green tea is better for your health. I prefer coffee to green. Prepare coffee in the morning. Don't you understand, do you? My husband becomes enraged easily and lashes out like this. How much easier it would be if I could honestly say I don't want to live like this. How many times I have wished to flee and live apart from my husband in 40 years of marriage. But I have my reasons for not leaving here. Since he was unemployed, I was the one who earned income to support our family and built a new house by saving money little by little. If I left here, this house would have been my husband's. I really wanted to avoid that. This new house has full of my hopes and dreams. I had deep discussions with the contractors from the beginning of the construction stage. Shaping my desire for the interior, exterior, and every other aspect of the house. My husband tried to intervene, but I didn't allow him to do so because I was paying for it. The new house was completed after about six months of hard work. Due to budget constraints, not all of my wishes were granted, but almost perfect. However, it cost more than I had anticipated. As a result, I had to take a larger mortgage loan than I planned, which I had underestimated. It's difficult for me to pay off a large loan due to my age, but it's nothing because it is for my dream house. The intercom rang when I was getting emotional. Yes, a moment please. Hello, this is Emily, 
who is Kaiden's wife. She is making money to support the family instead of lazy Kaiden. She appears to be a lovely woman, but she has an aggressive personality. She is obviously being aggressive, especially to me. Isn't Kaiden with you today? When I approach her in this manner, she always ignores me. Oh, Emily san, welcome to my home. Please come in. This is my new home. Isn't it incredible, is it? Truly amazing. I wish I could live in a house like this. Emily, you're always welcome here. In fact, you can live with us in this house from today. Oh, my father in law. Something like this. She behaves like a spoiled child toward father in law very much. I'm curious how long they've been getting along so well. I feel disgusted by my husband's interactions with daughter in law. Hey, prepare tea and snacks right away. Don't be a jerk to Emily Chan. I did as I was told, serving tea and sweets to her. She began eating without saying anything to me. Normally, she should have said thank you or itadakimasu to me. But there's no point to expect such a word from her. She said, I am going back to only my husband and left the house as soon as she finished having tea and sweets. Why she visited this house? I am tired of her attitude. Ever since, she more frequently comes to our house. At the beginning, she came over here only when my husband and I were home, or only once a week. But she gradually increased the number of her visits, and she comes here almost every day after three months. And she always c o m e here when I am not at home. I'm not sure why she comes here so often. Question remains in my mind. One day, I received a phone call. Hello, Mom. It's been a while. How have you been? Harry, of course, I'm fine. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's Harry, my second son. Unlike my older son, Harry is hard working and takes good care of his family, who I am proud of. He's busy with work these days. So, I don't get to see him very often, but he calls every now and then. How are things going? How is the new house? It's very comfortable, but I have a bit of problem. Harry asked, Is it about Emily? How do you know? I asked him how he knew. He said, I don't have much time, so I'll explain about it briefly. What? Is that true? Yes, it is. Because I heard it from my brother the other day when he was drunk. That story was hard for me to believe, but it made sense to me. Are you okay? Harry asked me because I became silent. I'm fine. Thanks for telling me. It was a very useful story. I've been thinking about it for a while, and I have a favor to ask you, Harry. I need your assistance, I said. I decided to do something and asked for Harry's assistance. I started working for it next day. I did it after work and on my days off so nobody would notice. It has been a few days past since then. Hello! I was a little sarcastic to her, who had come to our house as a matter of course. It's unusual for you to come here when I'm home. However, she did not respond to my words at all. She took off her shoes at the entrance and came into the house without saying anything. When I was giving her an icy look from the back, I heard someone's voice. Oh, well, this is a really nice house. Kaiden, what a surprise! My oldest son also came over today. He behaved like his wife, 
He took off his shoes at the entrance and came into the house without a word to me. My husband then came out from the living room as if he had been expecting two of them. I've been waiting for you two. Hey, come this way. They all moved to the living room as if I had not existed. This is an open kitchen, so you can see the living room from here. This is wonderful. I'd love to see Emily cooking in this kitchen. Bathroom and toilet are the next. I could overhear my husband's voice from back of the house that it seemed like he was showing around our house. After finished showing the first floor, this way, they went to the second floor. Harry was right. I was secretly following them. And I heard suspicious words coming from the bedroom. This room has a nice view and size is big enough, right? Of course, there is a toilet on the second floor and an extra room over there, too. Wow, this is a fantastic house. When can we move in? I was skeptical at first. But my doubts changed into a conviction when I saw three of them closely. They returned to the living room with happiness after they had finished looking around the house. As soon as they came back to the living room, my husband complained. What are you doing? You are very impolite. Bring some tea and snacks here. They came from far away. That's okay, Daddy. We care about elderly, so take it easy. I agree. It is usual to act slower once people get older. You should be nicer to her because you two are a married couple. I have so many things I want to say, but I'll be patient at this moment. I prepared some tea and snacks to them, as I was told. But he is dissatisfied, and my son and his wife did not say anything. I don't think they know what I'm thinking or what I'm dreaming now. Three of them enjoy conversation in front of me and are giving me a dry look. My eldest son and his wife looked around every corner of the house, following with my husband, and they went back their home. With excitement. A few days later, when I got home from work, I saw a truck in front of our house. My husband was talking to someone by the side of the truck. I got closer to see what was going on and noticed that the truck was labeled Scott the Moving Center. Oh, I see. I glanced at him for a second and then He was getting inside the house with a mover. On top of that, my oldest son and his wife came to join him behind my back, as if they would have waited for the right moment. Well, it is ready, right? Yes, that's right. As soon as they finished talking, they walked right into the house without even looking at me. I stood outside the house and observed everyone. They discussed what to do next for half an hour and came out from the house with a mover. They all looked exultant. All of them were seeing off and bowing to the moving company. After everything was done, three of them were looking at me at the same time with grim smile. My husband said, I'd like to talk to you. Okay, don't say anything and say yes to my question. You don't have the right to refuse anyway. The oldest son and his wife were listening to our conversation beside me and were grinning. The husband then takes a deep breath and said, You are too old for this house. It's time for younger generation. Thus, I sold this house to my son and his wife. 
Following the husband's words, daughter-in-law said, "That's right. Get out from this house quickly." My husband is calling me an old woman, and she agrees with his opinion. And she scoffs at me and is telling me to leave this house immediately. Additionally, my eldest son is standing behind them and accepts it. Their face seemed like an evil, not human beings. Hey, did you hear what I said? This house is no longer yours. It's better for you to leave this house immediately. If not, your husband will get full of rage. Whatever they say is very nasty to me, and I cannot believe they are my family. Do they really want this house so badly? Sure, I'll let them give whatever they want. I understand. I'll leave here as you wish. What I said made them fell silent involuntarily. I ignored three of them and went inside the house to get my belongings. I'll give you this house. You can have the house, but even if you do, you never know how much trouble ahead of you, and you never expect that you will be the one who will regret. I still have feeling for this house. Because of all my big efforts, but it doesn't matter now. I just get out of this house quickly. When I am carrying my belongings away, expression on their face is unusual. I have never seen such a face before. I suppose they are relieved because I'm away. But it's only for now. Be ready, I muttered quietly. I left the house and went to a specific place. Hello, thank you in advance. I've been waiting for you, mother. I'm sorry you had a difficult time, mother. I will take your luggage. The place where I was going is my second son's house. The reason I moved here is Harry called me a while ago. Harry informed me that. My husband was about to sell our new home to our eldest son and his wife, so I began planning for that day, which I had to move out while I was keeping in touch with Harry. He asked me to live together. That is why I am here today. Actually, there is something that I haven't told you yet. The second son suddenly had mysterious facial expression. And spoke up unexpectedly. In fact, my father and Emily are having an affair. What the hell? The second son told me that my husband and daughter-in-law were having an affair. When I'm looking back, there are certainly many suspicious things about those two. But is it true? Then. My second son took out his phone and showed me a picture. It clearly showed my husband and daughter-in-law having an affair. According to the second son, my husband started seeing her shortly after the new house was built. Oh, probably at that time. Presumably, Dad will ask you for divorce in a few days. I would not be in a normal state of mind if I knew my father was having an affair with my brother's wife. But he talks calmly, so I believe you should devise a plan for that. I told something to him. He looked surprised by me and said, "I see that will work." A few days later, I received a call from my husband. As my second son expected, I have decided to divorce you. Sign on the divorce paper today. Sure, I'll be there later on. Everything was arranged. One thing that remained was a direct confrontation with those three. I texted my second son right away, and all he said was, "Good luck." My husband was waiting for me. 
in the front entrance when I arrived. He came close to me quickly and gave me the divorce paper immediately, like asking me to sign my name on it right now. I fed up with his behavior, but I signed my name on it. He became overjoyed and immediately went to the city office to submit the paperwork. As a result, I was legally granted the divorce from my husband. We decided to talk with a divorce lawyer about what happens with the division of property between us later. So we ended our conversation there. When I returned home and told my stories to Second Son about the divorce, he said, So all we can do now is to relax and wait. Two months had passed since I had left the new house. I received a phone call from my eldest son. I never knew the monthly loan payment is 180,000 yen. He got panicked, but I calmly responded to him. What? I was the one who paid back 180,000 yen every month. Why should I pay back that loan? I am not there anymore, so my estate, of course, will be transferred to you, right? He could not hear what I was explaining. All he said was, Please do something for me. You're an old man, so you have to take care of yourself. That was all I told him. I hung up the phone and immediately deleted my oldest son's number. My second son was standing beside me and burst out laughing. His laughter was very infectious, so I also burst out laughing. The next day, when I got home from work, I found the three of them asking for money to my second son. Please, lend me money. I can't make a living without financial help. Please, Harry, help us. Harry, please help me. Nobody told us about 180,000 yen monthly loan. They were all kneeled on the floor side by side in the living room. I let out a long sigh of despair. Then, my ex-husband noticed me and said, Why are you here? I have been living with Harry and his family since I left that house. My ex-husband got furious because he did not know about it. But I cut him off and it's none of your business. Then he said, That is more important. When can I receive money from the division of property? Oh no, he doesn't know anything. Well, we don't have any money. Of course you do. When you divorce, you are supposed to share the division of property. Yeah, usually, but only if you own the property. We do not have any properties. Even after all of this, my ex-husband didn't seem to understand what I was saying. I carefully explained to my ex-husband again. Okay, you've been unemployed for a long time, and I paid for all of our living expenses as well as the mortgage loan for the new house. I could manage to cover only for those necessities, but I could not save any money because you spent it all on yourself. After he got to know the truth, he was shocked. I gave him the final word. As you are expecting, I am going to ask you for alimony. Be prepared. What? Alimony? He was shocked. I kept talking. You know, you are having an affair with Emily, aren't you? I have known it. Our second son saw it and even took pictures for an evidence. The second son took his phone out and showed some picture of suspicious infidelities. My husband seemed lost and collapsed. The daughter-in-law got devastated 
and began crying as soon as she saw pictures. The oldest son stayed by her side, but started shivering and got extremely mad. She was crying a lot more. Madman and crying woman. My ex-husband could not move at all. It was a funny situation. My second son and his wife are just amazed by the picture of hell that was happened at their house. Then, the second son forcibly threw the three outside and reported to the police that someone was making a fuss in front of the house. This may be because the situation was troublesome. Ten minutes later, the police rushed to the house and caught the oldest son who was being violent. Then, eventually, the police arrested the eldest son's wife who was crying and mumbling something, and the ex-husband who was stunned nearby. Three of them were taken to the police station. After that, the three were released from the police and decided to live in one bedroom apartment, including six tatami mats. However, the oldest son got crazy after learning about their affair. He became verbally abusive to both all the time and my ex-husband got mentally ill due to his abusive language and own guilt, unable to work anymore. And the eldest son's wife worked hard for both, her husband and my ex-husband, from the early morning until late at night. What's more, she seems to be having a hard life every day because she has to pay alimony to me too. By the way, the new house has been sold. Well, they could not make a monthly payment, so it's the only way. On the other hand, I severed ties with my oldest son, his wife, and my ex-husband. I will never see with those three again. Since then, my job as a kimono dresser has gone smoothly and now I have my own store. And I'm going to build my own house again. After that, I'm thinking to ask my second son and his wife to live together. Next time for sure, three of us as family will have a happy life. I work at a big company, you know. I can work enough for both of us, so no worries. Kenneth had said that during our engagement, but as soon as we got married, he changed his tune. He and Matthew would hurl insults at me daily. On top of that, he managed the money himself and skimped on living expenses. He'd complain nonstop, even though he let me do the cooking. Fed up, I declared divorce to Kenneth and left the house. Later, I bumped into Matthew by chance. Hey, heard you're getting TANF now. <laughs> I was surprised. Huh? You must be mistaking me for someone else. Don't put on airs. Matthew smirked. Listen, we're estranged, okay? Don't come crying to me about having no money. I won't lend you a dime. Remember that. As I opened my mouth to retort, he had already disappeared into the crowd. I lowered my head, feeling the stares of passersby my shoulders shaking. I couldn't suppress my laughter. Poor thing, he knows nothing. I can't wait to see his reaction when he learns the truth. I'm Hannah, a 50-year-old housewife. I married Kenneth five years ago. When we met, Kenneth was the picture of a fine young man. We met at a gathering of acquaintances, and I found him fun to talk to and very friendly. As we parted, he said, I want to meet just the two of us next time. Feeling sad about saying goodbye, I agreed. When we started dating, he mentioned having a son named Matthew with his ex-wife, who was then in fifth grade. We dined together a few times. He was a bright and pleasant boy, just like his dad. A year later, on the night Kenneth proposed, I took a leap and opened up. You know, I live with my parents while working part-time, right? The company I joined right after graduating was a black company, and it wrecked my health. Is that so? 
it was tough to quit too. I think long hours will be difficult for me in the future. Then, Kenneth smiled kindly. Don't worry about it. Just stay at home. Look, I work at a big company. I can work enough for both of us. Relieved by his words, I accepted his proposal. I was glad to have met a good man and believed we were starting a happy married life. I never imagined tasting despair in less than half a year. As we got used to living as a family of three, Kenneth and Matthew's attitudes changed drastically. They started ridiculing my actions and words in a light tone. Mom, are you bedridden again? Where's my sandwich? Matthew frowned discontentedly as he came into the bedroom before school. I had participated in weeding at a nearby park yesterday and felt ill. It was an unusually hot day, and I had felt unwell since the day before. I had asked Kenneth, but he refused with an irritated look. Being a housewife must be nice. Slacking off all year? I need my days off, you know? Let me rest. Okay. Unable to get up the next morning due to pushing myself, I apologized to Matthew. Sorry, Matthew. I couldn't prepare your sandwich, so buy one at the grocery store. Handing him money, Matthew grumbled. Mom, can't you at least make a sandwich? You always take shortcuts with frozen food or leftovers. You're failing as a mom, if you can't even cook. His words stung. Don't blame Mom, Matthew. Kenneth joined in with a half-smile as he passed the hallway. Since you skimped on the sandwich, tonight's dinner must be lavish. Oh, is that so? Then I'll look forward to it. Being a housewife, you should have plenty of time for dinner, right? You're not sleeping until the evening, are you? Make sure to clean thoroughly, without slacking. The two of them nonchalantly laughed at my poor condition, dropping their insensitive lines before leaving. As if I could prepare a lavish meal. Lying in bed and staring at the ceiling, I let out a heavy sigh. <sighs> because Kenneth is an extreme penny pincher, despite being a section chief at a big company and earning a high salary, the living expenses he gave me were ridiculously low. It's my salary, so why should my wife manage it? After we married, Kenneth insisted on this, and I, not opposing, meekly followed. I believed it didn't matter who managed the finances as long as it was done properly. Then Kenneth got carried away and started spending money as he pleased. It's necessary for work. Drinking expenses are business expenses. It's essential. Using such reasons as an excuse, he would buy expensive clothes and watches for himself, but make a sour face even when I bought cheap snacks. Since he insisted that a housewife doesn't need an allowance, I had to report to Kenneth and get permission to spend money whenever I went to the hair salon or bought clothes. One pair of jeans is enough, isn't it? You're buying more? I want a warm pair for winter. Fine. Buy them at a cheap store. I also want to get a haircut. Can I go to the hair salon once every two months to maintain my hairstyle? Huh? What's the point of you trying to be fashionable? If you keep your hair long, you only need to cut it once every six months. I won't allow haircuts. That's why I'm only allowed to buy cheap makeup from drugstores. I want to switch to something better because it's rough on my skin. But he won't listen. Moreover, the living expenses he gives are a third of the average. Within this budget, our nutrition will be unbalanced. I lamented, to which Kenneth responded with a raised chin. On that TV saving show, they managed to live on this amount. They had a farmer-in-law providing vegetables and bread. It's impossible with these high prices. That's your job to manage. I was distressed by the thriftiness in living expenses, but what I couldn't stomach was about the wreath for Dad's funeral. When Dad, who had been ill, passed away, and it was time to send a wreath, Kenneth visibly grimaced. We don't need to send a wreath for the funeral, right? Anyone attending the funeral, other than the chief mourner, should send one. Really? Then use your savings. It's none of my business. He said this to me, 
as I prepared for the funeral with tears in my eyes. His utter lack of concern infuriated me. I never planned to ask you for it, so don't worry. Good, but do Matthew and I really have to go? Our long weekend will be ruined, and I hate that. Right, Dad. I have plans to play a new game. Although they grumbled, I never doubted they would come. However, Kenneth and Matthew arrived late, barely greeting my mom and relatives, and left swiftly. My exhausted mom didn't seem to have the energy to blame them, but my relatives were furious. What's the meaning of this, Kenneth? Your wife's father died, and you're too cold? Matthew, you've received so many gifts and allowances from Hannah's dad. While I apologized to my relatives, I felt my love for the two of them rapidly cooling. Kenneth, always in stylish suits with a refreshing aura, and Matthew attending a prestigious university. Well regarded as a handsome father and son in the neighborhood, they only hurled insults at me at home. They wouldn't come straight home after work or school, wandering around and returning with lipstick and perfume scents. Despite doing as they pleased, they treated me like a housekeeper, demanding lavish meals with a meager food budget. Lately, when I served dishes with chicken or pork, both would glare at me with disdain and hurl insults. Don't you want to serve your husband good food after he returns from work? If I get sick from eating this poor food, how will you take responsibility? Are you even a mom? I can make delicious meals, even with chicken or pork. Besides, disliking vegetables and fish, you'll get sick with such a picky diet. I'm saying I'd eat, if it were high quality. Don't complain when you can't satisfy us. I don't need advice from someone as frail as you. They used to eat while complaining, but lately, they just leave the food untouched. Yet, if I don't cook, are you slacking off even though you're a wife? They would yell. I eat the leftovers for breakfast or lunch the next day, but tears well up, wondering for whom I'm cooking. As for their meals... They subsist on store-bought sandwiches, instant ramen, and snack foods. Eventually, Kenneth was diagnosed as pre-diabetic in a company health check, and Matthew started gaining weight. It was an inevitable outcome. Then they lashed out at me. What kind of wife makes her husband and child sick? We don't need a useless person like you. We're getting a divorce. Then I'll leave. They were surprised when I agreed easily. Are you sure? You're unemployed. You've been living off me. How will you survive now? Don't worry about me. I'll send the divorce papers for you to sign later. Please leave my stuff until the movers come to pick it up. Nobody's going to take your stuff. Kenneth sneered. You'll definitely regret divorcing a high-earning, handsome guy like me. A kind husband who lets you be a housewife with three meals and naps? There's no one else like that in the world, right? That's right. You've been living in luxury on Dad's money till now. You'll struggle from here on. While I packed clothes into my suitcase, Kenneth and Matthew kept talking endlessly behind me. Honestly, I envy Kenneth's ability to overestimate himself so much. When we were dating, I saw this part of him as confident and shining. You'll just go back to your parents, right? Say hi to your pensioner mom for me. You two will be heading straight to poverty. Matthew, I bet they'll end up on TANF soon. <laughs> Matthew laughed at Kenneth's prediction. They already reek of poverty, but with Grandma, it'll be the ultimate. The funeral the other day was nothing special. It smelled like poverty. I thought so, too. Like a poor family's funeral. I want a lavish one, Matthew. Got it, Dad. But for Dad, who works at a big company, and me, attending a prestigious university, poverty is a different world. Their endless comments infuriated me, but realizing it was pointless to respond, I let it all go. After returning home and explaining everything to Mom, she lowered her voice. At the funeral, seeing Kenneth and Matthew, I felt something wasn't right. 
but I thought it's not good to interfere too much in my daughter's household and kept silent. I was too preoccupied with Dad's care. I'm sorry for barging in like this. It's okay. I've been lonely without you. Why don't you stay here? Thanks. But once I get my job on track, I plan to move to an apartment. Mom's concern was comforting, but living with her might make me too dependent. Living nearby and visiting occasionally would be the right balance. Yes, Kenneth and Matthew mocked me as unemployed, but in fact, I've been working from home. It all started with the budget recipes I posted on my blog. After receiving many positive comments, I boldly launched a cooking site and shared my recipes, which quickly gained readers and internet fame. Soon after, an editor from a major publisher approached me, and now I'm gradually preparing to publish a cookbook. Thanks to this, I had no time to dwell on the divorce, and days flew by. One day, my phone rang insistently. I paused, stirring the ingredients in the pan, and answered the phone. Hello? Hey, what's this about a deposit for the divorce trial? <sighs> I sighed, knowing it was about that. You and Matthew hurled endless abuse at me. Oh, I thought, never mind. Relief in his voice, Kenneth continued. I didn't cheat or anything, you know? Hmm. What? Did you record me and Matthew? Your memory alone won't cut it. I've noted everything in my diary. Try and claim it if you can. Really, poor people and their obsession with money. You reek of frugality. If you think you can get a deposit for the divorce trial, go ahead. <laughs> After his outburst, Kenneth hung up. I finished cooking and visited a detective agency, requesting an investigation into Kenneth's background. Soon, his affair with his subordinate was uncovered. The day after sending the two-shot photos and investigation report to his company, Kenneth contacted me again. You, spreading this at work is low. The angry manager reported it to the higher-ups, and now I'm fired. Oh, she was the manager's daughter, wasn't she? It's your fault for cheating, knowing they're strict about such matters. <laughs> I continued laughing. But you shouldn't have any trouble, right? With all the saving you did, you must have plenty of savings. Aren't you and Matthew living luxuriously? Matthew moved into a dormitory this spring because commuting was tough. Damn. I have prepaid dorm fees and apartment loans. My savings... Drained by that woman. She was two-timing me with a younger guy. Sounds tough for you, but it's none of my concern. Oh, and about the divorce trial deposit? I'll also take half the value of the apartment for distribution of property. When the invoice arrives, please transfer the full amount to my account. Kenneth was yelling on the other side, but I hung up without a care. One day, while returning from shopping in town, I bumped into Matthew. Dressed in his usual flashy fashion, with piercings all over his face, and his attention-grabbing hairstyle, he was easy to spot from a distance. Seeing me, Matthew raised his hand in greeting. Hey, heard you're getting T.A. enough. <laughs> I looked puzzled. Huh? Who are you mistaking me for? Don't put on airs, Matthew said, smirking. It's obvious. Where an unemployed old lady like you would end up? If you had just obediently followed me and Dad, you'd still be living a comfortable life. It's pathetic, really. Angry? I couldn't help but retort. Receiving TANF is a citizen's right. Any one of us could need it someday. Due to illness or an accident, it's wrong to look down on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're saying you're receiving it, too. Matthew said, dismissing me with a smirk and pointing his finger at me. Listen, you and I are estranged. Don't come crying to me for money. Remember that. As I opened my mouth to reply, he turned his back and disappeared into the crowd. I lowered my head, conscious of the stares of passersby, shaking my shoulders. I couldn't help but laugh. 
It was just too ridiculous. Poor thing, he knows nothing. I can't wait to see his reaction when he finds out the truth. A few days later, I woke up and checked my phone to find an unbelievable number of missed calls from Matthew. Reluctantly, I called back, and Matthew shouted at me furiously. You deceived me, old woman. What are you talking about? I heard from a cousin. You got three high-rise apartments from Grandpa's inheritance and are living a carefree life. Hiding that and getting a divorce is cowardly. That's my personal asset. Why should I have to tell you or Kenneth? It's joint property. You should have done a distribution of property with Dad during the divorce. Unfortunately, it became mine after the divorce procedures, so I can't give it to Kenneth. Officially, I knew from Dad's will that it would be mine, but I delayed the procedures until after the divorce because I didn't want to share it with Kenneth. Then Matthew shouted in frustration. A rich woman like you getting TA and F? I'll report you to the authorities right now. Feel free. It's not me, but Kenneth who's receiving it. Matthew fell silent. What? I told you last time. It's not me. I explained as if speaking to a child. Honestly, even without the inheritance, I can live well. I have income from the cooking site and book sales I started in secret. But Kenneth, after spending all his money on his affair, had lots of payments piling up and was borrowing heavily. When his affair was discovered and he was fired, his income stopped. Are you listening? Dad's on TA and F. No way. Ah! I pulled the phone away from my ear as Matthew screamed. Waiting for him to calm down, I continued. You really didn't know anything. He's too proud to tell his son. According to relatives he begged money from, he's behind on his apartment rent, facing eviction, and now stays at home all day in an old apartment. If you're worried, why don't you contact him? There was silence on the other side for a while. Then Matthew said resentfully, You're cold-hearted. After all Dad did for you, you have no intention of repaying the favor. If you have money, you should give some to Dad. Why should I? Ever since our marriage, it's been nothing but unpleasant memories. I don't feel indebted. I stated coldly, If you're so concerned, why don't you, his son, lend him money? You're working part-time, after all. I don't have savings. The part-time pay goes to, you know, hanging out with friends and stuff. Matthew suddenly became evasive, and I smirked. You've been living quite lavishly for a student. Borrowing money to hang out at clubs is not a good idea. How do you know that? The other day in town, I saw you from across the street. After we parted, you met up with a girl at a club and entered a brand store arm in arm. Also, a club membership card was left at the house. And using my credit card for shopping without my permission is out of the question. Matthew stammered in response. That's unfair. You got high-rise apartments from Grandpa. Why don't I or Dad get a share? This is discrimination. Yeah, yeah. The credit card bill will be sent soon. Make sure you pay it. Before I could finish, the call was disconnected. <sighs> Sighing, I ended the call too. Just when I thought it was all over, a few months later, Kenneth and Matthew showed up at my parents' house without any notice. The doorbell rang incessantly, and when I answered, it was the two of them. Expecting they came to borrow money, I let them into the house to avoid causing a disturbance in the neighborhood. Kenneth and Matthew, who until recently were so stylish, now appeared drastically changed. Wearing wrinkled shirts and dirty trousers, their eyes lifeless and gaunt. But they still had the energy to be sarcastic. Entering the living room, Kenneth looked around and sneered with a half-smile. Same old house, huh? Why not sell one of those high-rise apartments and rebuild this place? Do something nice for Mom, living miserably on her pension. This is Dad's house, and we like it this way. 
More importantly, when are you two planning to pay me back? You're past the deadline. Kevin lifted his chin arrogantly and said, Hannah, I'll forgive you now, so let's remarry. What? You started a cooking site, right? If you manage the household perfectly, I'll even let you work. So come back. Such a generous dad, forgiving the wife who abandoned her husband and child. So mom, why not live with dad again? Living with just two women must be insecure. Stunned, I was speechless. After a moment, intense anger welled up inside me. Don't joke with me. How much more do you plan to ridicule me? Furious, I yelled at the astonished Kenneth and Matthew. After treating me like nothing more than a housewife, hurling abuse, not providing proper living expenses, and then driving me out? Now you want me back just because you found out I inherited high-rise apartments? No way. What? You're going to abandon us? Rich people really are stingy. Knowing we're struggling with money and still demanding payment, you're heartless. You were poor yourself until recently. Don't get cocky. In the midst of the argument, Mom returned from shopping. Kenneth and Matthew immediately started buttering her up. Please, lend us the money. We'll probably pay it back. Besides, isn't it unfair that only Hannah gets Grandpa's inheritance? Give me one of the high-rise apartments, too. Hi, Grandma. Long time no see. How have you been, Grandma? Please persuade Mom to remarry. Dad doesn't want to break up, but Mom is being stubborn. Mom, surprised at first, changed her expression upon hearing their lines. She placed her echo bag on the fridge's floor and let out a deep sigh. <sighs> so shameless, both of you. Uh, what? I'm telling you to have some shame. Startled by Mom's sudden loud voice, Kenneth and Matthew were understandably confused. Mom, usually calm, scolded them sharply. I've heard everything about the divorce from Hannah. I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here. No, no. Hannah's exaggerating. You have to listen to our side, too. That's right, Grandma. Mom is quite the liar. I remember how well you two behaved at my husband's funeral. Mom cut off Matthew's words and continued sternly. Arriving nonchalantly late to the funeral, not greeting me or the relatives, yawning through the service, and leaving before the coffin was sent off. And now you dare ask for his inheritance. Go back to sleep. She drove a taken aback Kenneth and Matthew to the front door and glared at them one last time. You two are now strangers to us. Don't come here again. If you do, I'll call the police. Mom threw their shoes out the door, forcing them to leave in their socks, and immediately locked the front door. Kenneth, who had been avoiding paying me, was advised by his lawyer that a lawsuit would cost even more. Reluctantly, he finally transferred the money to my account. Even though Kenneth was fired from his job, he couldn't find another one, and the in-laws, hearing about their son's situation from relatives, stepped in to cover his debts. They visited my parents' house and apologized profusely for Kenneth's troubles. Later, Kenneth, having given up on finding a new job, returned to the countryside under the guise of helping with the family's farming. However, the story of our divorce spread through the village, leading to both children and elders pointing and laughing at Kenneth. There's thrifty Uncle Kenneth. Even with the degree from a good university, and a job at a big company. What's the use if your wife leaves you for being too arrogant? The reason for his divorce from his first wife was also his reckless spending. He'll never change. Being mocked by the villagers is embarrassing. Remarry me to show them. I kept receiving such persistent messages from Kenneth, so I deleted his contact. His mistress, apparently no longer interested after the money ran out, had long since left him. I found her with the detective's help and made sure she paid the divorce trial's security deposit. I also made Matthew reimburse for the card he used without permission. Though enrolled in a prestigious university, 
and on track to become an elite like his father. Matthew started skipping classes and playing around, leading to failing grades and eventual expulsion. His friends and girlfriends were concerned, but Matthew, in his arrogance, alienated them with his prideful remarks. He then had a major argument with Kenneth, saying, You're my son, yet you won't help repay the debt? Now they're estranged. Matthew lives alone in a small apartment, making ends meet with part-time jobs. Gone are the days of buying whatever he wanted and enduring sarcastic remarks despite high earnings. For me, it's a refreshing change. With my cooking side taking off and a book deal finalized, I moved to the top floor of the high-rise apartment inherited from Dad. Mom is still healthy at 73. The high-rise is close to our family home, so it's convenient if anything happens to her. I'm planning a surprise hot spring trip for Mom's upcoming birthday. Though my marriage was a failure, I want to continue having a good relationship with Mom.